Hi guys, and welcome to another kit review. Alright, so today we're doing a review on this classic Tamiya kit. It is their 135th scale, 88mm, black 36-37. Originally issued in 1972. Uh, the original um, kit number was double M117. This particular kit Kit number is 35017, was uh, reissued with uh, slightly changed parts in 1988 and is an ongoing issue by Tamiya. I picked this one up for about $32, $33 Australian. Average price is $35.40 at the moment on these. They come and go, but they are a constant issue by Tamiya because they're a really good kit, really nice kit and um very very popular i love them that's why i bought this one okay so as you can see you get the sundap motorcycle with the rider the 88 with the transport wheels and eight crew figures to go along with it one of which has the um, rangefinder for the gun okay so really nice packaging hasn't changed much in fact, I don't think it's changed at all since the 70s. So let's have a look at the rest of the box. There you go, on the side, Tamiya's 8-ton half-track. Vehicle not included, just in case you were hoping to get one of those. I did build at least two of these back in the 70s. I'd love to get my hands on one, but at the moment, they seem to be quite rare. And the 88 in towing configuration with the crew. History of the 88 in Japanese. And on the other side, this is a range of Tamiya's classic tank kits from the 70s, 80s. You've got your Jack Panther, your Panther, your Tiger 1, your T-34, and your SU-100. All of which I built back in the 70s. Um, a couple of which I have bought the later versions of. Okay, so... That's the box. Let's have a look inside. So yeah, I'm pretty sure most of us have built one of these, seen one of these, had one of these at some stage. So nothing unusual about that. First bag out is your vinyl tubing, which replicates the communication uh, cables for the 88, which would go to a larger rangefinder or if it is a um, anti-aircraft would probably go to the communication center next bag out is your crew figures plus the gun barrel gun shield and decals the next bag out is for vinyl tires your, your axles etc and these are your bogies for the transport wheels and all the fittings for the actual gun and the Sundap motorcycle. Alright, so let's see what we've got here. So you can tell this is an ongoing issue by Tamiya because it has a correction. Okay, so this is a correction for part 10 and part 3. What this correction is, is basically back in the original days you um, melted the pin here and also the pin here with a hot screwdriver. Can't do that nowadays. Too many people hurt themselves. So they've just corrected, updated the parts so you don't have to do that and thrown the correction sheet in. Okay, so we'll put that over there. Two sets of instructions, one Japanese. One in English, we'll have a look at those shortly. And the usual modern inclu inclusion, inclusion of how to drill holes, how to cut things off, etc, etc, etc. So as you can tell, this is definitely an ongoing issue by Tamiya and it is always available. Okay, so let's get rid of the box and in a second we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals.
Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. All right, fairly straightforward. You get uh, four views of the actual model with the crew. Okay, down the bottom here it says MM. Okay, which is a link back to the fact that this is the original instructions for the kit that came out in the 70s. And it's just been reprinted and they've taken the actual 117 number off. Okay, being classic Tamiya instructions, it has a full history of the 88, where it was developed from, how it was used, where it was used, as in what did as a war, etc. Okay, really nice black and white photos of the gun in action. And the history goes over three pages, okay. If you've got the time, well worth reading the history, looking it up. All right, this will give you an idea about how to paint and the area that you might want to paint this uh, gun for in the theatre of operations. Okay, so classic Tamiya. All right, so like I said, these instructions for, are from the 70s, right? And we start off with construction of the Zundap, which is fairly basic and straightforward. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of wiring to it, but it's not necessary. So we finish off the Zundap and the rider figure for the Zundap. Fairly straightforward. And it does say here, right here, 88 millimeter gun is composed of many detailed fine parts. Assemble Zundap motorcycle first, and then you will get hands, then you will get hands of assembling fine parts. Okay, I think they mean hands-on experience of assembling fine parts. Okay, so there we go on to building the cruciform. Okay, so literally this is folding legs on the cruciform base for the 88. This is step three. This has the amendment part. Over here you'll see it does say um, join this part with a heated end of screwdriver so that's the part that they've removed so they can't have people burning themselves then you build the cruciform so this is an easy construction kit it might have a lot of parts but simple construction all right then we get to the battery case the fuse setter etc okay accessories for the actual gun mount itself gun barrel unfortunately is two part and you do have breech and depending on whether you're going to have a flak 36 or a 37 okay you do have these optional parts or what which weapon you want that's where you make your choice okay then we just get to putting the previous constructed parts on and it does say here flak 37 okay so I'll go back up here that's this flak 36, okay? Then you've got your flak 37 parts. So there are optional parts. You can make a flak 37 or flak 36. Just read the instructions and you shouldn't go wrong. Okay, then we carry on to the gun mechanism itself, okay? So this is just your elevation mechanism, recuperation sections, another Section 10, amendment there, no heated screwdriver, and then literally we're, we're mounting the recuperators and the sides and the main body of the 88, all on the pedestal. Okay, fairly simple, straightforward. Then we get to the gun shield. Okay, ammo boxes, right, first member of the crew. Right, then we put the barrel in, slide it in, so it's not glued. This is your shell hoist, right? Shells go on there and they get loaded into the, the breech. And that's it. Step 14, you've literally constructed your 88. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Right, 14 steps. There's a lot of parts to it. Some of them can be fiddly, but it's not hard. Okay, and then 
we go on to building the bogies. All right, so these are fairly straightforward suspension, axles, etc. Okay, not too hard if you take your time. Then you come down to the accessories that go on. So these are just your brake cylinders, etc. These are your okay reels that go on the front and back bogies, both sides. They carry the cable, okay? And then it just carries on. Putting more fittings on, putting the wheels together, putting the vinyl tires, and note that the bogies have four tires each, okay? And then if you want, depending on how you want to set this up, it does come with screws, so you can screw the bogies onto the cruciform base, okay? And then choose in transport mode. Fairly straightforward. After that, she's finished. So step 22, the whole gun is finished. Then you've just got the assembly of the crew, okay? As you can tell, this has been updated with Tamiya's colours, although there's no colour chart included. But it does also tell you what colour. Field grey, flat black, etc. to paint the crew. Internet references for that anyway, because these are possibly outdated. And anyway, you can vary the colours depending on um, how you feel. Okay, and then we get to painting. And it gives you a complete rundown of how they were painted, right, as far as the overall dark grey, overall dark yellow, and camouflage, etc. So that's entirely up to you how you paint this gun. North Africa, winter camouflage, which is of course white, and eastern front, which would be dark yellow green. Okay, and that's it. Literally. And then you get to the flying decals. Okay. So you do get helmet decals. And you do get battery decals. Kill marks. Okay, divisional marks. Italian front marks. North Africa marks, which is your Africa core um, markings, etc. And it does show you the markings that go on your 8-ton tractor. The Zundap only gets number plate markings, but it's quite inclusive, especially as you do get helmet decals as well. Okay, and that's it. Then you have your sprue layout with a full parts list. So, classic old-style Tamiya. Right, and on the back, a complete list of all the classic Tamiya kits from the 70s most of which at some stage I did make all right so that's the instructions let's have a look at the decals sorry that was a bit bright okay so I bring those up there there's the copyright 1972 okay but of course, like I said, this is a re constant reissue. So these are always being upgraded. Helmet decals, plenty of those. Africa Core, kill marks, and your tactical divisional markings. Okay, really nice. Fairly clear. Nothing wrong with those at all. These are brand new decals, they are not. 1972 yellow ones all right and that brings us to the end of that i'll give you a shot of these and then we'll have a look at the sprues okay so let's have a look at the sprues so first we'll start with the tires this is your vinyls i'm not going to open that because those screws will definitely disappear okay but they are just simple vinyl tubes and these are the tires so like i said this is a constant reissue so these are not 1970s vinyl tires they are probably 2020s right vinyl tires 
there is a line, the mole line down the centre, which will need a little bit of cleaning up, but it's not too bad and it's not too obvious. So I can feel it, but it's not too bad. All right, that's an easy clean up. Sand it down a bit, it'll rough the surface up, which is exactly what you want for a tire anyway. All right, so they're really nice and they are, as I said, modern production, quite flexible. So I love those. Okay, let's have a look at the first row out. Oh, and before I forget, there's a reason why you don't throw bags away straight away. This is the rangefinder. It was loose in the bag, so I'll have to put that somewhere very secure. Okay, so first brew, bogies, wheels, cable drums. Okay, these are your suspension parts and fittings for the bogies. So it looks complex. It's not. You just have to remember to read the instructions. Let's have a look. Okay, so remembering that this is a 1970s kit. All right. It does have some bolt detail on the toolboxes, accessory boxes for the bogies. Really nice bolt detail and crisp. So this is an ongoing issue. So there is no major flash, although there is join lines where the mold is starting to get a little bit tired, which will need to be cleaned up around certain parts. So there's a fair clean up of the mold lines, but no major flash to clean up. All right, there's your bogey sections. Okay, and nice and clean, but it is an old kit. So yes, it will need a bit of a clean up around the mold lines, but that's not too bad. Let's have a look. No, look at that. Still got the 1972 copyright. Okay. That's it, brings back memories. Okay, so the next one is the cruciform base. So what you have here is your wicker ammo containers, Zundat motorcycle, cruciform base parts, legs, so your outrigger legs, your motorcycle soldier, okay, plus the fittings okay. for the barrel rest etc so let's have a look let's start off with these okay so that's your wicker containers for the shells paint those up put a nice wash over it and they will come out really nicely there's your Sundap motorcycle as I said if you wanted to you could add some wiring to it but um, not too much, otherwise it'll just get lost. There is, as I said before in the other one, a bit of cleanup required for the mold lines. But overall, there's no major flash. The hooks and things up here will need cleanup. So everything's going to need cleanup around the mold lines, etc. But there's no major flash. Okay. It's really nice and crisp, and being a Tamiya kit, like I said, an easy put together. Even your figure, all right, even if he is a 1970s figure, he will paint up quite nicely. There's not too much excess flash, it's a little bit, not too bad. 
just a clean up. I like it. All right, I like Tamiya because they do keep their molds fairly clean. All right, so there is only four sprues in this kit. The next one is this one. So, gun shield, all right, sides of the gun, it's your gun base, gun barrel, okay, and just your fittings for the recuperators, etc. So let's have a look. So there's your gun shield. It does have bolt detail on it. It's really nice. There's a set of shells, right? So you do get two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve shells to go with it. The detail is really nice. The chain, okay. So the chain and stuff like this is literally uh, to make sure that you, you don't lose something during transport, etc. But the bolt detail, wiring detail, see if I can get that in focus. Wiring detail, okay, the 1970s kit. But even back then, Tamiya put a lot of effort into getting the details, the bolts on the gun slide. Okay, instrument binnacles, which are these here, instrument binnacles hand wheels there is going to be a bit of cleanup I can see some mold line issues here but remembering that this is a 70s kit that is constantly being produced it's not too bad at all so you do get shells and empty shell cases for this kit and that is the gun The only other sprue left, which is also copyrighted 1972, is the crew. Okay. You do get more shells, helmets, bread bags, pistols for the officers. Okay, you do get eight crew members for this. They do get K98 rifles and as you can see right there there's a mold line that needs to be cleaned up so this mold is showing a little bit of age especially for the figures but it's not too bad so let's have a look at a couple of them so they're not modern dragon resin figures okay but they will paint out quite nicely. The uniform detail is nice. The faces are a bit plain, but for a 1970s kit, the detail on these is pretty good. So there is a fair bit of, oh, sorry, that went out of focus. There's a fair bit of cleanup around the figures to be done. But considering the age of the kit, 1970s, basically reproduced almost constantly since the late 80s. This one is faring pretty well, and it is a really nice kit to build. Okay, so that's it guys. That brings us to the end of this review. 
So I know most of you have probably built one of these, seen one of these around the traps, etc. But you know, just thought I'd throw this one in there. So I hope you did get something from it. Okay, it is a Tamiya Classic kit. It is one of those that if you're into collecting armor models, 35th scale, this is one that you definitely have to have in your collection. Okay, so as I said, that brings us to the end of this one. I hope you did get something from it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, take it easy. I'll see you later.